Welcome back guys and today we are talking about signature edition games that they are a company based in the UK that puts uh, I would say indie type titles on a physical format which is really nice uh, they have a way of putting their items in a special package so let's take a look Now, the first game we're going to take a look at is Count Lucanor. Count Lucanor really gained my interest just because of the art style, the pixel art. Uh, it looks like a dark fairy tale, like kind of like, like a kid's tale, but it just has that little dark twist to it. And I'll get to that in a moment. I wanted to show off what the signature edition packages usually come with. This game actually comes with a soundtrack and an art book. Uh, really well done, nice looking. So the game stars Hans, a 10-year-old boy. It's his 10th birthday. And uh, he wants to celebrate. Well, he, at least he's hoping for a birthday gift. Uh, but unfortunately, they're poor and they can't afford any gifts. And so he's upset about that. And, you know, I don't know if it was like like this back in the day in, in this in this era. But, you know, he's 10 years old. He says, you know what? I'm going to go off in the world and become rich. And his mom actually lets him go. But the thing is, she actually gives him some stuff to go on his journey. So that kind of tripped me out when I saw that. But it's really cool, though. So as you go on your adventure, you could do a lot of things. You could, like, help people or not help them. But not helping them will kind of, like, uh, it, it might work against you in the future. And I'll go a little bit. I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. So far, what I like about this game is that you could tell almost from the beginning that it's going to get dark. And... You know, I don't really see too many games that have like a, a darkish fairy tale type. Uh, the last one I played was American McGee's Alice. Uh, so I would kind of like would say this is kind of similar to that, but not really in that way, I guess. Not in the way that it's a, a real popular fairy tale, at least not that I know of. So you meet the goat herder and you decide to uh, drink some wine with him. Now, a 10 year old boy drinking wine, you know, that's already like a bad combination. So on this part here, I actually thought he was dreaming. And this sequence right here shows the raven. So right here, I would believe this is like the transition into possibly a dark world or, you know, it's not. It's definitely not a dream and the boy's not hallucinating, but a lot of crazy things happen from here on out. You wake up and you see the raven and he, he doesn't look too happy if you see that icon, how he looks. He looks pretty insane. So, uh, <laughs> but anyways, you're walking around in the dark and you have a candle and you can't really see everything yet. So it's it's kind of it's kind of tripped out a, a boy lost in the forest with only a candle, which is just it's, it's it's very eerie to me. I mean, I can't imagine being lost in the forest. So as you start walking around, you see the goats that that the goat herder was around, and they're actually standing up, uh, kind of like they're chanting something. It's really weird. And then you notice that the goat herder has actually been killed ish. Um, his head is cut off, but he's still talking to you. So uh, I examined the body. I immediately at this this scene, I got out of there, man. I did not want to hang around these guys. Uh, just a tripped out scene. If you survive that encounter, you'll make it to the castle. Uh, but right before you get to the castle, you meet the Cubbolt. I think that's how you pronounce it or whatever he's called. But he's some like kind of ghost. And he's telling you about the Count Lucador uh, that he wants you to take over his estate. And, you know, if, if you could guess his name, he'll take you to meet him. So... Basically, you got to find these letters. Uh, I'm guessing this will kind of affect the ending of the game, too, because the game has multiple endings. But whether you spell the name right or wrong uh, will, will kind of contribute to that. The game has traps and stuff like that. And it also has some people you'll meet inside the castle that you're in. So very interesting game. You'll, you'll be chased by enemies, too. You can't attack in this game. You can run and hide and, of course, try to avoid stuff. But uh, it's just that type of game where it feels like... Uh, I don't want to say it's survival horror-ish, but, you know, I, I kind of feel that way about it. If you help people on your journey so far, they'll be here at the manor waiting for you, and they can help you with uh, whether it be keys to get through locked doors, even letters to help you spell the kobold's name, and all, just good information in general. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you guys is that the manor is pretty dark, so if you have multiple candles, make sure you set them around the castle so you can see better. The game is very interesting so far, so I think you guys will like it. Unbox Newbie's Adventure is a game I thought that I would not like at all, and man, the game took me by surprise. So you play as a cardboard box, and uh, you kind of you do like these weird missions where you kind of wrap yourself up, uh, set yourself up for shipping, stuff like that. There's all kind of other boxes that are around the area too that are doing the same thing, and it's kind of like you have your own base where you set operations. 
I guess you could kind of say it's like a post office type game. Uh, you play a lot of mini games, and you, you know what I really like is this the tropical theme of the game. You know, it really makes you feel like you're going on a vacation. Uh, you there's a little island you're on. Uh, you kind of like um, there's mini games you could play. Uh, there's even boss battles in this game. So whatever boss battles you think you could fight in this game, I mean, it's just kind of funny just thinking about it, like a cardboard box a battle or something like that. But anyways. Uh, very interesting game and i i ended up thinking i was only gonna play it like maybe for like maybe 10 minutes and i ended up playing it for three hours so you know that's a good start for a game like that the game is just so different you know what i mean like it kind of feels like a breath of fresh air almost you know i've never played a game where you play as a cardboard box so <laughs> that's already interesting right there the game has voice acting or maybe it's just weird sound effects it's kind of like uh, if you remember the first clonoa game how they have their own language well this game has the same thing so uh, <laughs> it's just very funny and charming no just i just want to say this right off the bat you know judging this game by its cover you know i i would not have gave it a chance but now that i'm playing it it's just like wow dude i, I need to like make sure i don't do that anymore you know i gotta make sure i'm trying these games out no matter how, how the cover looks now i'm not saying the cover looks bad but just for someone like me it didn't look interesting at first but i'm just happy I tried this game out because it totally, it totally is, is a lot of fun, and it's, I think everybody will like it, even if you don't like the cover. Origami is a stealth uh, adventure game, kind of like in, in the way of if you re remember the, the Tenchu games or heck, even Metal Gear Solid. Uh, so pretty much, you play as a as an as an assassin. Uh, you, I don't know the whole story, but I'm I'm sure you want some kind of vengeance for something that happened to you in the past. I like the way this game pulled me in in the beginning. You know, it's, it's I don't know, it's something about the environments, you know, it just feels like really, I don't know, like you're really being an assassin or I, I don't know what it is. There's there's something about this game that just feels so familiar when it comes to playing it. It just really, it'll really pull you in. One thing I thought about when I was playing this game is, that, you know, a lot of games like have this big voice acting cast and, you know, that costs a lot of money. But if games kind of like, like kind of went back to make it help helping use your own imagination when it comes to the storytelling like you know reading dialogue and stuff like that you know i think they could actually have more money to like make better games of course but hey that's another topic though but anyways you have to hide in the shadows you'll attack enemies from behind on top of buildings uh you kind of like you're taking your vengeance out however you can I like that there's a meter where it'll show you where if enemies can see you or not, if they if they have a sight of you yet. So first it'll be yellow yellow when it's cautious, and then after that it'll turn red. Uh, red is when they see you and they'll start coming after you. So you want to you don't want that to happen because you want to stay stealth because the game is a lot more playable when it's stealth. But I really like the art style in this game. You know, uh, the way the game plays, and like I said before, it is it just really reminds me of the old school, like I would say PS2 era type stealth stealth type games. You know, uh, just sneaking around, and you know you don't have to worry. It's not really like a sandbox game. You know, you have an area that you're in. You have items you can upgrade to kind of make your help your help you on your quest, make you better at what you do. One thing I notice about these type of games, when it comes to finishing off your opponent with a blade, it's just I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me getting older, but it's just, it's just messed up, man. I mean, gunfire would be m more preferable than going out by a blade, but, you know, <laughs> that's, I don't know. This is something to think about while playing this game, for me at least. So Origami is a pretty cool game. I actually really like it, you know. It pulls you in. Uh, the story doesn't take too long to get into. They give you bits and pieces of the story as you go on, so not too much in the beginning where it kind of floods you, where you lose interest, but... You know, just bits and pieces that will kind of keep everything really interesting. So Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Uh, this game really uh, is hard to explain how this game is. So I would say take Harvest Moon. And if Harvest Moon was an adventure game, uh, you probably would have Yonder. So in the beginning of the game, you could create your own character. And you start off on a ship. Um, from what I could tell, either you're going back home or you're going somewhere that you've never been before. So in the beginning, you get to talk to the passengers, and you gotta get a kind of get familiar with your surroundings. But of course, after talking to everybody, something happens, and a storm starts brewing, and the ship ends up being, uh, I would say, pretty much tossed at sea. You know, uh, everybody's panicking, and you know you're trying to survive, but uh, it, you end up just uh, the ship ends up being pretty much destroyed, and. Uh, 
from that point on, you're in another world where you're talking to some kind of entity. And next thing you know, uh, you wake up and you're on this island. Well, maybe that's a bit much. I would say, first off, you start in a cave on the island and you're trying to find out how to get out of this cave. Uh, you're looking around, you have a lantern, and you find this fairy type creature. And this fairy type creature kind of gives you a little information, talks to you a bit, and kind of assists you throughout the game. So here's pretty much, as soon as you get that character, or maybe I should just say this, as soon as you get out of this cave, that's pretty much when the game pretty much starts. And you're, you're kind of just like uh, shown this whole new world. Uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, I kind of was, I was pretty amazed when I first saw how it was presented. It looks really good, uh, very bright, and just, it just, you feel like you're, you're about to go on the journey of your life. But I just want to want everybody to know that, you know, Yonder might not be for everybody because so far in this game, and I don't think you get, can at all, it's not like a fighting adventure game type. It's type. It's more of a type of adventure game where you walk around, you, you do things, complete quests, and then you can open up other areas and explore more things. So it's more of like a exploration game, I would say. I don't know what it is about this game, but it kind of feels like a throwback in a way. You know, it's not really... It, it it's an adventure game, but like I said, it, it's not really. It doesn't really focus on on battles, but it just something about it just feels really nostalgic. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, doing the small little quest and getting items to open up other areas. Maybe that's what it is. But there's just something about this game. I can't put my finger on it yet. You know, I'm definitely gonna have to play more of it. And I, what I've played so far, I'm enjoying. Um, it, it's it's. I would say it's kind of like maybe slow paced in the beginning but then again i'm still in the beginning stages so i don't know if it picks up with a story or anything like that i do like how the game transitions between night and day so as you're walking around uh cities will become livelier at night where you'll see the lights come on and just things different things will happen like that i i i really like that type of stuff so anyways guys i hope uh yonder might be up your alley if not let me know in the comments if you played this game or not um I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just really weird about this game. I just feel intrigued by it. I don't know what it is. I mean, I know it's not uh, not this big, heavy adventure game, but it's just something I really like about it. And I just, it's weird. I can't really put my finger on it. I mean, maybe it's just everything or just how it's just presented. Anyways, guys, sorry about my rambling. If you like what you've seen so far, check it out. Slain Back from Hell was the first signature edition game I bought, and man, I mean, they started with a bang. I think I believe this was their first game, but I'm not really sure. But I bought this game because it reminded me of the old school Castlevania games, and uh, I, I, those games are just so amazing to me, uh, to, even to this day. So Slain Back from Hell, you're brought back to life, and you kind of have to, like, I won't we'll say too much of the story, but you kind of have to, like, save the day, restore things, and it, this game is brutal. I mean, there's traps that could kill you in an instant, all kind of weird stuff. And the main focus of this game is that you have to know how to parry your your enemy's attacks. That's essential to uh, being good at, like, the succeeding at this game pretty much. Because at first, I was trying to ignore it, and that just really made the game so hard. But once you get the parrying down, this game becomes so much more. And also, you get magic attacks and that you could throw at enemies and... The platforming uh, could be kind of brutal sometimes, but if you if you have that old school flair of you know being good at the Castlevania uh, type games, this game will be right up your alley. Another good thing about this game is that the music is really on point. Uh, I'm not really into heavy metal. Well, I would say Guilty Gear would probably be the closest thing that what I'm into. But the soundtrack this game produces, man, no joke, man. Seriously, uh, they did a great job with it. Very compelling. Uh, every moment, uh, a lot of the soundtrack fits certain moments in the game. Guys, it's just really on point. And it makes you think, like, hey, Signature Edition games, man, this, you know, this is why I'm happy with them because they actually put soundtracks in their games, you know. Uh, you know, even if I just, that's just su such a bonus to me, you know. Even if a game doesn't have a manual, which I'm always upset about, but if it comes with a soundtrack or something like that, man, that, that's, just, that's just so cool. But anyways, guys, what do you think of Slaying Back from Hell? Is this your type of game you want to play? Like, would you consider it? like on the level of Castlevania or maybe a Castlevania type of game. Um, like I said, I, I like the old school Castlevania games and I even like the Metroidvania ones, but the old school ones are just the ones that I really enjoy the most. Man, they're the hardest. Uh, they feel like the most rewarding. And I just, I can't say enough about them.
but I do feel like Slain Back from Hell is our new generation Castlevania. Super Meat Boy is a game I definitely didn't know too much about at all. I've heard of people playing it, uh, but I never really looked into it until now. So my good friend Marcus is a big fan of this game, and he was over at the house, and he was actually playing this, and he was he's actually pretty good at it, but one thing I noticed as he was playing this game, man, this game gets hard, and uh, it's funny because as you play the game and you make mistakes, it'll show you the mistake you made and then as you're, as you're playing the game so you won't make it again. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, there's a lot going on in this game at once. Uh, definitely a game where you might want to, you might make you feel like you want to throw down your controller, but as long as you could continue at the same checkpoint, you'll be good to go. But I will, have to t I will tell you guys, this game will get on your nerves sometimes, so just be aware. It's not, it's not for anybody who has weak nerves. I played it quite a bit and I did okay, but I got a lot more to learn with this game. Well, I won't say a lot more to learn, but I need to practice a bit more. Uh, this type of game or this type of difficulty is is kind of old. Well, it's old school for me, and to the way I haven't really played it that much. You know, I I, I could I could definitely adapt to it, but uh, I don't know, man. It's just sometimes when you get killed too much or you just get tired of it, man, you're just ready to play something else. But it's, it's a game that you. You're gonna die a lot, and you just have to get good at it, and that's the thrill of it, you know, uh, getting past all these levels and with a quickness, and yeah, simple as that. So, Super Meat Boy, uh, definitely a pretty cool game. I like it. Uh, I don't like it as much as I should because I'm always getting killed, but uh, it's a fun game and very interesting. Definitely something fun to play with friends. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Here's some feature products that Signature Edition Games has coming out pretty soon. Uh, they have some also standard releases that you could check out as well if you don't want to get the Signature Edition copies. And here's what's coming soon, which I'm very excited for. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you later.